To close out our first half of the event, we have Yoan Asmussen and Pablo Honey. Both Yoan and Pablo are going to share some of the important and sometimes difficult lessons learned from the process of creating a new user interface for blocks. Yoan is a designer and developer out of Denmark, fan of yard work, block editors, and bringing designs to bear through implementation rather than just static mockups. Pablo has dedicated most of his professional career to design for the digital media in its state of constant flux, helping both Fortune 500 companies and startups to consciously design for new technologies and a variety of advanced products and experiences. Here is Yoan and Pablo. Hi everyone. I hope the sound is okay. Um, it's an honor to be to be here and share some of the work that we've been doing in a different and new format. We've uh, shared some of this work initially in November last year, and it's been an excellent. Uh, it's been excellent to get uh, your input so far. With, uh, with that spirit, uh, we want to also um, format this talk uh, with openness. And um, while we have 40 minutes dedicated, um, I think we, we want to go through uh, it all in half of the time, uh, hopefully, and then open the conversation to everyone, uh, Q&A and discussions if they come up. Since the launch of uh, Gutenberg, um, there has been an explosion of blocks and many million uh, people, um, users interacting with the, with the block editor, uh, leading to multiple iterations, uh, improvements, challenges, and lessons learned that we were not aware of uh, when it was released. So as you saw uh, early um, in the talk with Matt and Matthias, uh, we've been advancing the block interface, the block UI. And we're going to share some, in some tangible terms, uh, the reasoning behind that evolution and how we've tried to solve some of the challenges that uh, emerged so far. A good reminder is that not only in, it's only implemented in the plugin, uh, so we have time and space uh, to test it properly and hear your feedback. Thank you, Pablo, for that introduction. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you in this past year, revisiting the Block UI. Um, as Pablo shared, the user interface has grown in complexity since the inception of the Block Editor. As a concept, the idea of a Block Editor was sort of new at the time. Uh, the idea was that every bit of content is a block. Every block has a single UI to learn the block UI. And once you know that UI, you know how to do everything. You shouldn't have to learn how to use widgets or write custom HTML or paste a video URL and hope it embeds as a video or visit multiple different sections to build your website. But even then, the interface had been designed for a vastly simpler feature set and did not really scale to accommodate increasing complexity, such as nesting, where you could have blocks inside other blocks. Uh, this challenged the block UI, both toolbars and the mover control and uh, borders would overlap, causing a great deal of visual noise. In being attached to a square border around the block itself, the toolbar could find itself cropped in some situations. Um, so one takeaway we made was that uh, there was simply too much block UI, which just confuses where you need to go. It's um, it, it's also challenging for keyboard usage as tab focus has to traverse multiple separate controls. The mover control on the side would overlap in nested context. The toolbar attached to the block would not scale to plugins or mobile. So we had to 
reduce the complexity of the block toolbar. The borders around blocks, uh, ironically, are not always square. Um, and they did not indicate the actual footprint, uh, but at the same time, they could easily be mistaken for focus uh, or selected, which would confuse what actually had focus. In this screenshot, for instance, focus is on the alignment button in the toolbar. These very same borders, because they didn't represent the block shape or footprint, they were actually drawn outside the boundaries of the block itself, <clears throat> excuse me, which caused a great deal of overlap that in nesting situations could even um, cascade. So our second takeaway was to revisit block borders to emphasize focus. have been using icons uh, heavily it's mixing custom hash icons so another takeaway uh, was the, to improve the unity and clarity of the icons uh, used and to find a little bit more intention uh, to of the of, of those icons for um, hierarchy purposes in, in summer time they has evolved to handle more complex and uh, these have grown um, organically to meet new challenges but in trying to address those and isolate and new problems or elements that were not designed to be prominent suddenly became prominent or uh, things that were not designed so we looked essentially at what uh, trends and uh, related to the UI emerged, emerged from about 2,000 2, tickets. Then we shared openly those explorations in November, as I said, uh, and we pulled from there to end up in some of these specific designs that we, we are going to share. Firstly, as I did mention, we made an effort to unify everything in the block toolbar. Here's a before and after of the heading block. Um, and you'll note how in reducing the block silhouette, it's much clearer where you take action on a block because everything happens in the toolbar. In actually leveraging the block footprint, it's easier to see what's part of the block and what isn't. Focus is also clear in both of these examples, the image block itself has focus, which means you can press the delete key and the block gets removed. In the left image, there's a block border, but it isn't different when that block has focus. So in a way, it doesn't have a focus indication. The columns block is one of the more complex blocks and reducing the UI really helps a lot. Perhaps the most basic ingredient in an editor is the paragraph. If you, if you just want to write a post, you really don't want a lot of UI getting in the way. You can also see how the new block toolbar is actually a fair bit bigger than before while still not feeling quite as heavy. It's a full 12 pixels taller, which affords bigger tap targets and bigger, more legible, legible icons. Like the image block, the spacer block benefits from a focus indication. The social links block, I think that just landed yesterday, right? It's uh, It holds a great deal of complexity in that each individual link is actually a block itself. With overlapping borders in such a narrow context, it's even more important to reduce the block UI so as to not interfere with those delicate uh, dimensions. In this animation, the mover control is actually being used to merge into the box toolbar itself. It, it, it helps provide a unified interface, regardless of whether you need to move horizontally or vertically. In this one, uh, just the keyboard is being used to rearrange blocks. 
By detaching the block toolbar from the block itself, it can now bump against screen edges so that in complex nesting situations, we avoid cropping it. I mentioned very early on that making sure that the toolbar scaled for plugins was important. You can imagine plugins adding a bunch of buttons here, growing wider. In that case, it would still be visible on screen. The block toolbar is more stable in its position, uh, regardless of whether a block is floated or spans the full width of the page, the block toolbar is always constantly available in the top left corner of a block. This is in contrast to before where the mover control would shift around from the side and block borders were not actually possible around floated blocks. So these uh, reduction exercises uh, to understand how, how we could simplify in the, the block UI guided us to things like uh, creating a grid that helped to balance the anatomy of the block. Elements became more balanced uh, and more modular. They also helped us to create more legible, uh, bigger tab targets, higher contrast, setting itself apart from diverse uh, designs, uh, being clear what's content and what's uh, the editor UI. This color set uh, of the UI also enabled to have more clarity and contrast, uh, regardless of the background. I spoke a lot about focus indication before as an important thing. Um, and part of that reduction exercise that Pablo speaks to uh, was revisiting our focus styles. We had at least four different ones. So instead of having those, we settled on a single unified focus style, which is a thicker blue border. You can see in this animation traveling across the buttons. That very same focus style is applied everywhere. In this case, you can see how focus travels from the block itself into buttons inside and then backwards into the toolbar. When a block has a blue border around it, you could say that not only is it focused, it is selected, which means you can press the delete key to remove that block which is also helpful for what we sometimes refer to as selection mode, um, which is very important for keyboard or screen reader users. Uh, you start in this mode where instead of having to tab through block toolbars to get to a block down the page, in this one, you just press the arrow keys and pick the block you want. If you need block number 20 in a post with tiny blocks, you press tab, 20 times and you're there. At any one point when you're editing, you can press escape to enter this mode. That highlights, that selects the block. Click a paragraph, press escape, press delete, you delete that paragraph block. You can press enter to edit the block again, as is shown here. It starts in selection mode and then uh, enters editing mode at the end. Icons. Um, by exploring icons, we increased uh, their size, simplified the silhouette, and connected them to the rest of the language, uh, leveraging even the, the block UI outlines. While we've designed a handful of them, uh, elemental icons, the architecture of them and the compatibility with libraries like Material will help with uh, scalability. Drop downs start to feel more natural uh, coming from the same elements uh, as the toolbar itself, reducing the amount of unnecessary icons and improving the contrast and clarity there. So those are a lot of things um, and there's more to come. Uh, there's a lot more to come. This is only the beginning. Um, a couple of efforts that seem relevant to revisit uh, soon are the surrounding controls um, and iterations to inserters 
and how uh, we can search and browse blocks and patterns um, more contextually. Uh, these are only just uh, uh, quick examples of some some of the ongoing ongoing work that is happening both uh, for the inserter and and also side sidebar controls. Most of you know how, uh, but it's a fair reminder uh, to uh, say that please collaborate testing the plugin, reporting issues through PRs. Uh, both Joan and I are very much available as well as the team that has been working on this. And we're eager to hear uh, your feedback and just get, get more uh, collaboration in um, to get this to a great um, level of design. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you both for that wonderful uh, update on the new UI that's currently merged in the plugin and uh, will be coming into core for 5.5. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Oh, yeah. hopefully. Um, so first off, I think the slide about contributing was fantastic because uh, lots of people have opinions about design and that that's like the key area that grabs people's attention and brings them in and brings them on board with everything so giving everybody a opportunity to share their opinions and their feedback is a great thing to do um we have uh, one question right now that i see there could be others rolling in i'll ask this one brian wants to know how many hours of thought and iteration do some of these changes represent? Oh, it's a it's a lot. Um, Pablo, do you want to unmute yourself and, and take that one, or or should I? Um, I don't know if I have an answer for that. I think uh, there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of permutations uh, that happened to this, not only. Uh, between us, but also just listening to the feedback and like responding to the feedback uh, so far and the issues opened. It's hard to to put a number on on the hours. I think we we also uh, have other responsibilities in other areas, uh, so we juggle different things. Um, but we we put a great amount of thought into it. Uh, I think we um, WordPress deserves the best design uh, possible, and I think we're here to provide that, to provide the better uh, and best experience uh, for the editing experience. There, there's another aspect to it as well, which is one is is when you, you have some challenges you wanna address and you start to address those in mockups, but then at some point you enter an implementation territory where you start to test things, not, not I mean, even beyond prototypes. Uh, you, you start to, to implement pieces of it. And then, then you learn some things that make you revisit some of those concepts and it becomes sort of this organic back and forth. There's some high level thoughts you have to sort of get right. And then it has to meet with reality at some point. I, I, I also would say that uh, there has been a lot of thought put into it, but I would say that a lot of making into it so I think the thought happened through the making, a lot of permutations to um, uh, make something more material, more tangible, and like um, get people to react to it, helped to uh, go with the thinking at the same time. So there's a, there was a good uh, balance and dancing of thinking and making along the process. Really cool. Another question here is, um, was there a way in which nested blocks were explored further? How to select, like how to select the parent block? <laughs> yes. Oh yes, oh yes. That is perhaps the most important problem to solve. We have tried so many things. It might even be fun to, to, to sort of uh, go down memory lane and explore them. We've tried these parent borders where you could click a, a cascade of borders to the right to select the parent. 
but in many cases, that meant you had to sort of hunt for pixels to find out which little pixel would highlight the parent block, and then it wasn't the block you wanted. That didn't work very well. We have the breadcrumbs and the footer. Uh, no one looks down there. It's, it, it works pretty well, but it's, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. We have this block traversal button in the top toolbar, which is actually working really well. It's, it's got some great shortcut keys as well. That, um, one of the things that was designed here uh, and explored here is, is, is simply a, a parent button, a button that says select parent. So like you, you, you click a child block, you press this button, you select the parent, you press the button again, you select the parent again. Uh, there are some designs for that. We haven't shown them here, but um, I can share a ticket in chat where you can probably explore some of those uh, things after the Q and A. Um, so absolutely, and I think we will not relent until it is intuitive and and easy as pi to select the right layer you want, because uh, otherwise, the many pieces of it aren't as as uh, functional as they should be. I hope that answered the question. That was great, actually. Yeah, I have another question. Peter asks, when do you think we can share these new u this new UI? with our meetup groups. I want people to be excited about this, but not become frustrated because they can't use it yet. Right, right. I think it's a, everything is in, is open. Uh, so uh, there, there are Figma file, and there's a Figma file that is open to everybody. We'll be including more materials there. Um, so everything should be available. It is true that things evolve rapidly and, uh, uh, you know, we are iterating uh, in implementation as well in, in design. So it, it sometimes it's hard to like catch up, but everything is open both in the tickets and in a Figma file that everyone has uh, access to or should. And if not, please reach out to us and we'll give you that access. I would also add that, that uh, it, it depends on the person. Uh, I like very much that this is part of the plugin, but not WordPress 5.4. WordPress 5.4 is an excellent release, and you have a pretty stable block editor there that you might have gotten used to, even if it doesn't have all the new bells and whistles we're exploring. So you you can you can dip your toes in the water with the plugin, and if you feel like you're not quite ready yet, you can deactivate the plugin and go back, and you can do that as the plugin gets refined on a weekly basis. Um, we feel like, I, I certainly feel like the plugin is, is in a very good place. I, I feel a little bit um, frustrated without it, to be honest. But there, everything has rough edges and we'll sand those off as well. Really good, yeah. And um, so it, it's safe to say sharing these with meetup groups is a great thing to do right now, uh, especially getting, for, for getting gathering feedback as well, yeah. as both Yoan and Pablo have mentioned. Um, I have another question from Birgit asks, what is the next phase of the UI improvements? I think I, uh, I mentioned briefly, uh, one, of, one of the pieces is, uh, we've been focusing a lot of work in, in tidying block uh, UI itself as the, the toolbar within the canvas, but I think there there's still some work to be to be done in the surroundings uh, of that of that UI. So sidebar, um, the inserter. I think we we had a sneak peek. Uh, there's an issue open um, if someone wants to participate um, around the inserter to to be able to insert both blocks and and patterns. I think those are like work in progress materials that um, are pretty much need in order to be aligned with that uh, new language that we're placing in the plugin. Yeah. And one more question. Will we see this UI come into the WP admin in the future? That's a great question. Um, I, I like to approach this component first. We have these new WordPress components 
button, uh, switch, checkbox, everything. So uh, a block toolbar is a component. Um, you can see all those components in Storybook. And I think our first effort here is to make sure those components are excellent and really good so that every single plugin that can use them can leverage them. Uh, those are all JavaScript components. Bringing those into WP Admin um, brings with it some technical questions that are important to answer at some point. Um, for example, for I, I share the same passion. I, I want every little bit, just to quote Pablo here, of WordPress to have great design. But you have to sort of start in one place and then see where the road leads you. Right now, we're focusing on the components. And if, if, a, if a magical pull request or track ticket pet with patch appears that makes that icon component outside of, of the block editor itself, I would, I would uh, applaud and, and be very happy to see that happen. Um, so there are some technical aspects I, I can't give you an answer to right now, but uh, I would love to very much see, see these components used widely because they're accessible, they're great, they're very lovely. Really great answer. Yo and Pablo, thank you so much for your talk today. I don't have any more questions for you. Um, but it was an excellent conversation that y'all had and beautiful designs that you both shared with us.